I was shocked when I saw it just because it was so original and so clean. One of the most obscure muscle cars ever built is Oldsmobile's W31. The original owner's son, he bought his dad's house and with his dad's house came the car that has been in the garage for years. Not a 442, not a Hearst, and not even a big block. The W31 was a 325 horsepower 350. So far, the specs don't sound so hot, but W31, it turns out, was a purpose-built muscle car that has attracted a hardcore following such as James McKee. You know, I'm reading through some stuff on classic Oldsmobile and somebody makes a post, like they're, they're new to the form and they say, ending how a harmonic balancer works or how to get a balancer repaired. James already had two W31 cars, but that didn't stop him from tracking down a third. The W31 harmonic balancer is so unique. It's very thick, and it's a rare part that only came on the W31 cars. And I happen to come across it, and I'm thinking, okay, great, it's a W31 car, and um, you know, he's he's thinking of selling it, but he doesn't really know. And then he ultimately decides that he's going to try to get the balancer fixed and hold on to the car. I flew to Cleveland on a, a Saturday morning. I flew out there in the morning, and I flew home in the afternoon. So it was more of just me taking a chance, seeing if he was interested in selling the car at this moment in time. It was a, an attached garage. Um, it was in more of a, I'd call it like a rural neighborhood. I had the Uber car that dropped me off. The car had just a sheet covering it. But what it ended up being was like a, a, a vintage, like late 70s day two car that had all this drag racing set up. And it was just a time warp with all these vintage racing parts on it. But when I walked into the garage, I, we didn't even look at the car under the sheet. We immediately looked at the paperwork that he had that his dad had kept in his nightstand of his bedroom that had the original bill of sale, the dealer order form, one of the broadcast cards that he had found. And that was immediately what, what drew my attention because the whole thing with the W31 is being able to prove its authenticity. So looking at... The broadcast card here, printed in blue, March 2nd. Something over the body number there, but the 933 blue, twilight blue car, bucket seats, second broadcast card found. I see red plastic sitting underneath the car from airbags in the rear springs that because the car hasn't moved in so long, they've broken and they've just fallen to the garage floor. I mean, in the W31 cars, you couldn't get airbags in the springs. So I knew that the car had been modified a little bit. Now, I didn't know anything about that going into it, right? I thought it was just an original car that had been, you know, that had sat there for so long. And there are certain things that you can look at on these cars, but unless you have a paper trail, it's next to impossible to say this is a true W31 factory car. There was a picture the original owner's mother had taken as she picked up the car at the dealer. You can even see, like, you know how you, you take your car for an oil change now, and they put something in the, the rearview mirror that has, like, a number to it. And they had, like, the dealer invoice. He had receipts from the 70s when the motor was rebuilt. It even had the number of miles that were on the car when it was rebuilt. So I could see that in 1977, when this motor was rebuilt, it had 64, 65,000 miles on it. And then I look at the odometer in the car. So literally the car has gone 4,000 miles in 41 years. It was, it was so complete um, down to the original Goodyear polyglass tires that it was sitting on. I was just there to look at it and I went through, I went through the entire car front to back, right? So having W31 cars now and being a, a part of, um, you know, managing the W31 registry, I know exactly what to look for in these things, right? And I went through the car looking at making the making sure the right unique parts were there, right? The W31 aluminum intake, the correct coded rear end, the correct coded transmission, right? The W31 automatic car would have a JO transmission. So I was just making sure that all of the numbers on the car match, the block to the VIN, um, you know, every number that you would check on it. The owner had replaced the fenders, the front fenders. It was repainted in the late 70s. It is twilight blue, 
the rear end was a factory. So W31s from the factory came with a 391 rear, which this car did. However, you could get a 433 gear dealer installed, and that's what this car had in it. It has a 433 dealer installed rear end. It's it's the only item that was not there. That's actually the probably the hardest W31 part to find is the carburetor. It's even more rare than your Trans Am 69 Trans Am car. Like you cannot find it, and if you do, they're going for three or four thousand bucks. It's you no, know, it's a Rochester Quadrajet, and it's a it, the number is seven zero four zero two five five. The two five five carburetor is specific only to the W31 automatic and manual transmission cars. They are next to impossible to find. However, I have a spare. <laughs> so the day two mods are um, like a vintage MSD box, an XL super coil, headers, flex pan, a high stall converter, the sun tack in the gauge pod, different <laughs> gauges underneath on the inside. But it does have the fiberglass hood, which was standard for all W31 cars. It is functional ram air, correct? The thought was that this was somewhat of an insurance beater, but the parts were hand-picked, blueprinted, like they only used a specific um, run of production heads, or they only used a special run of pistons. Everything that was done with this assembly of the motor was blueprinted, and it's 325 horse. And a lot of people will tell you back in the day, this car with the 391 stock rear end would keep up with the W30 at the track. So it's, it's definitely no slouch. I mean, these are still 14 second cars. And, you know, there's even ones that have run at the pure stock drags in the high 12s, which is a ridiculous low gear. So they are very quick. They're, they're a small block screamer, if you will. That's part of how they advertise it. So you're in shock that you find this really nice mm -hmm. car. And so how did you manage to purchase it? Part of what I was doing out there, whether I was going to buy the car or not, was just help educate Andy on what he had. Um, and he says, yes, it's definitely for sale, which is something I did not know going out there. Right? I thought he might be interested in it, but he hadn't actually come out and said, Yes, I absolutely want to sell it because he always was a little bit vague about wanting to sell the car. Mm -hmm. So I happened to be out there and I said, what are you selling it for? And, you know, we were able to strike a deal from there. I said, you know, there, there are certain parts that, um, that are incorrect, but can be easily put back to stock. You're missing the carburetor, which is a large piece of it. Here's what I'm willing to offer for it. And we went back one round and we had a deal in place. 